Welcome to Sessions Providing Central Inbox for All SAP Workflows. My name is Harald Schubert. I'm the lead architect of the BPM unit here at SAP, and everything we show is for informational purposes and may be changed by SAP at any time. We'll start with a brief introduction to the topic, right? Why you want a central inbox, specifically in the Intelligent Suite. We'll look a little bit at the journey that we went through with this topic or this domain, if you will. Then we'll look at the new service that is coming up. We'll give you some product direction. I have a demo that I want to share with you. Uh, we'll look a little bit into the architecture and the APIs. Uh, public API is going to be important for you downstream. And then uh, we'll close with discussing some mobile options that we're planning and recommendations until the service is uh, finally available and some key takeaways. Okay, so you all know the intelligent um, suite with the set of applications that SAP has in its portfolio, is a, it's a pretty broad portfolio. And with all the acquisitions uh, that SAP made, it's a pretty diverse portfolio. And so uh, custom, uh, a common request that all customers pretty much share is that they expect um, a consistent user experience across all these applications, right? And there is different initiatives um, that are happening at SAP to accomplish this, and specifically also on the usability or user interaction level, um, this is really required. Uh, so customers want that the products feel consistent on a UI level, and this also holds for the inbox. We all know the problem of having to work off of multiple inboxes, right? You have one inbox in S4, another one in SuccessFactors, basically one in each line of business solution, and then even you will have third-party offerings that you use, uh, third-party solutions. Maybe you did your own development, and so you're stuck with this problem. Um, and it's a critical problem also because um, there is a you know a high profile user group that basically deals with inboxes all the time, right? You have managers, executives that maybe need to do approvals, which if they are you know delayed or not done in time, really can have a business impact. Whether it's things in financials or in procurement, for example, if approvals are not done on time, that can really have. Um, an impact in, in the daily business, basically. And the problem just grows as more applications join the SAP family, so the problem doesn't go away, we need to solve it. And it's not the first time we're doing this. Um, back in 2001, actually, we released the first version of um, a similar product on-prem, on uh, the universal work list, right, right with, which was plugged into the enterprise portal, uh, which allowed you to basically connect via adapters to different systems. Um, you could also uh, implement your own adapters and plug into it. Then later we had my inbox on um, the gateway uh, technology stack, right? So you could either run um, a gateway hub or you could run um, and, and my inbox on top of it. And then through the implementation of um, some ABAP uh, interfaces, you could basically connect to your own systems and achieve a similar goal. And now on the cloud, you know, we're taking all this um, experience to the cloud environment, to SAP Cloud Platform, and provide you a new cloud-based offering, a service, a central inbox service, which you can use to connect all cloud LOBs from SAP, but then later on your own um, solutions as well. The product will basically consist out of an infrastructure service, a service running on Cloud Platform, Cloud Foundry, which you need to instantiate. So it's going to be um, a customer managed service, first of all. And then you can configure it to basically connect to your LOB um, solutions or third party solutions and federate tasks into a single task stream. Architecture wise, this is going to be a cached approach. You know, so you basically can expect that the, the tasks in the different LOB systems are replicated into a central cache. So your end users always have a good user performance. There is no lag, right? The, the more systems you connect to such an inbox service, if you don't cache anything, basically there is, you know, the, the probability just grows higher and higher that there is some sort of um, yeah, disruption for the end user. So we're caching the information to ensure that there is always uh, an inbox that can be opened in, in uh, sub-second experience, basically. And then uh, the idea is that you can take actions on these tasks if th these are simple approvals, for example, right within 
uh, the inbox service. And if it's more complex work, you know, if you need to do maybe a year-end review of an employee, you don't just want to you know, take this off, but probably the best way for you to then is uh, to go into the target LOB to do the work there, complete the work item there. Both ways will uh, be supported. There is also the understanding that the, the LOBs, uh, like um, success factors, for example, who have their own inboxes, will show additional work items from other cloud LOBs. You know, so you could probably see uh, a simplified view of tasks that you need to do elsewhere. And this is going to be achieved by integrating with this service as well. And then on top of the service of this um, federating layer on Cloud Foundry, we will be offering our inbox app, a Fury 3 based app um, called My Tasks, uh, which you can use and then plug into a central launchpad, for example, um, or um, into any other environment that you see fit. Or you can also go ahead and use your own inbox. You know, if you build your own client, then you would be able to connect it to um, the inbox service via the public APIs that we offer. And uh, with these public APIs, you will also be able to connect third-party systems. You know, so this is something that uh, we will probably not release in the first version. But then midterm, we still want to have some time to make sure the APIs are solid and fulfill all the use cases. And once this is um, guaranteed, then we'll also certainly make it available to everyone. And with this, you will get really a harmonized user experience for your end users, a centralized inbox that all um, users can access. And the service will be available on cloud platform, um, Cloud Foundry. So following our multi-cloud strategy, um, you can run it on, on AWS or on Azure, and then later also Ali Cloud and so forth. Okay, this is a high level view of how this is going to work. You know, so basically here in the, in the lower half, you can see the central inbox service. There is the task cache that I was um, just mentioning and the Fury app, my tasks, which you can then plug in into a central launchpad, for example. And by configuring the inbox service, the inbox service then basically connects to downstream systems like um, SAP, cloud LOBs, and there is basically two ways how this task cache can be populated, either by um, following uh, a polling-based approach. You know, so every 30 seconds, for example, the inbox service connects to the LOB and asks for changes since the last time it, it fetched uh, the data. Or you can follow a push-based approach. You know, so basically, the, the LOB, the, providing syst the task providing system, can actively notify the inbox service there is updates and directly push the updates into uh, into the cache. And um, both have their, their pros and cons. Certainly, a pull-based approach is um, easier to implement, so the entry barrier is lower. So specifically, when you were to implement these APIs for connecting your own systems, for example, that's a decision you would have to take. Um, but the better approach, because it, just because it's you know, um, incurring less lag and the user-perceived experience will be better, uh, the push base approach would always be the best way to go with. And um, a, a key thing to keep in mind here is that since um, we are connecting to so many systems and you are in the end also having the expectation as a user that you don't need to log on into all these systems, you want single sign on, um, we are relying on the identity authentication service as the central IDP used for this. Um, so that's uh, also one of the kernel services that SAP is now putting into um, cloud platform, which uh, you will have to use. You know, so you will not be able to use your uh, custom IDP directly. Of course, you can use IAS in a, in a proxy kind of way and then connect to your Azure directory, for example. But you always have to have um, an IAS tenant. OK, with that, let's have a look at a demo. OK, so this is basically the concept cards, not, still not yet the final inbox. Yeah? This will look slightly different, but what you can see is how uh, the look and feel will be. And what we're showing here is basically uh, a launchpad experience, a central launchpad, which um, presents a home page that you are uh, knowing. And uh, you have different cards, right, which give you a, an overview of the work that you um, uh, have to do today. And we're basically plugging in to this concept by giving you a number of cards. Um, and one thing, for example, you can see here is there is um, a card which gives you a list of the most recent 
recently created tasks on your name that you can process and I could click on these and go into, and, uh, into them and, and work on an individual task. Or I can look at a grouping of tasks by different criteria. For example, here, grouping of tasks by priority or by functional criteria. So here I can see that there is five order related tasks, for example. Um, and as you navigate in the launch pad, you also want to have a central access point no matter where you are. That's why we're also going to plug into the shell header, basically, of the central launch pad. So you can see the work items here as well, and then you can go into the inbox uh, from here, or what I'm gonna do now, follow this route. And this gives you um, a table-like representation of all your work items. Um, you see all tasks in, uh, in one view, basically. And each task has basic information, like a subject, um, which uh, is delivered by the application, obviously. You can also see what application this, the tasks are from. Like here I have a task from success factors, one from S4, another one from Conquer. And um, next to that I see who created the task. I mean, this could also be system created, yeah, but in case users created the tasks, you would see them here. When it was created, if there is a due date on it, and whether it's overdue, for example. And um, then if I have a simple task, such as uh, this expense request, for example, here, um, first of all, I can see some additional information. I see this is just 300 euros, so I probably want to approve this in place. And the task is completed, not just in the cache, right? That wouldn't make sense, but it's basically synchronously going through to the actual backend where the task originates and completes the task there. And then it vanishes from from the list. So for simple things, this is um, what you want to do. At more complex work, you want to be doing directly in the LOB. Then in addition to this view of all tasks at once, we also have a representation here in these, in these tabs. So I here I can, for example, see there is five order related tasks. And the, uh, I mean, besides the filtering and reducing the number of work items you see, the added benefit of this is also that you can add additional data here. You know, so I can, here I have, for example, a value column for, every, for all the orders. You know, so I can show this here. And now I could, for example, go into my um, S4HANA task and process the work item in, in the toolbar here. I see my approve and reject buttons. That's something I could do. And that's now basically connecting to S4 and just bringing up the S4 screen. You know, so that's uh, done via an iframe in, uh, in the central launchpad. If you were to do this somewhere else, plug it in somewhere else, then maybe it would open up in a new tab or something. So in the first version, this is uh, going to be pretty much uh, something like a jump list, right? So for simple use cases, you can do these in-place actions. And for the more complex work items, you will be taken to the central place you know, in, in the application with a deep link where you can do the, the processing of the task directly. Here, for example, um, on timesheets, again, I have some, some more columns, and I can see the exact planned, recorded, and approved um, working hours of the employees. And similarly here, for example, if I have a cloud platform workflow task, uh, same thing. Again, the, the task UI is, uh, is brought up here, and, and I can complete the work item. and for success factors the same. And here you can of course see the user experience is not always um, uh, homogenized, it's not, not all Fury 3, but it, you know, the first thing for us really to achieve was to consolidate the inboxes and um, allow you to work from one single place. And then as the experience um, uh, gets more and more harmonized, this, this uh, perceived difference in UIs will also vanish. Okay, so with that, let's continue a little. Um, I now want to spend some time on uh, the APIs and the you know the way how we approach the problem. So you've probably heard in the in the keynote by Jürgen Müller yesterday that there was a domain model alignment across SAP to align on the different um, key business objects within the SAP uh, ecosystem, basically customer and order and everything and task was one of these objects as well. So we spent time with all the LOBs basically and the 
technical staff from Cloud Platform to do domain model alignment of what a task is, you know, agreeing on the individual attributes that a task has, what metadata we want to capture for, for tasks. Um, we worked on these concepts like um, these in-place actions that you just saw, uh, which are called responses, and uh, formed a core of the domain model. And then on top of that, we, we have a, a basically um, a list of extensions that we will be subsequently working on. The first extension, for example, that uh, we are planning to um, implement after the first version of the product is released is substitution handling. Uh, so um, similarly to the um, idea that you want to work off of a single inbox, you also don't want to go into 10 different LOB systems to uh, set your substitution settings and say who is your delegate when you are on vacation. Uh, so similarly, we will integrate this into, into the central inbox. And uh, so these are the um, APIs that we have defined. And there is basically two sets of APIs. One is a service provider interface. So this is basically the set of REST API endpoints that we expect from a task providing system. You know, so you basically implement um, simple REST APIs through which if you follow the, the pull-based approach, the inbox service can first of all connect to, um, to the target system and provide, for example, here, um, a modified add timestamp, right? So if you do a delta pull every 30 seconds, you want to give the timestamp um, from when on you want the changes, and uh, you can do um, paging kind of approach here. And then there's other endpoints to, for example, um, complete a task, you know, responding to a task. So here you can see all the, all the technical details. This is still internal. This is what the LOBs at SAP are implementing right now. Um, but once this is stable, this will also be handed out to, um, to you so you can add your own um, task providers here as well. And below you can find all the, um, all the entities. Uh, like for example, you can find what a task is, what, what attributes it has. Um, things like a status value, when it was created, created by, modified at, and so forth. So it's a really simple interface that you can implement and um, do it directly in your system, or you have a proxy in front. You know, so it's really something that um, you should be able to accomplish. And then on top of that, um, we have another set of APIs that are provided by the inbox service itself. You know, so they, are, they look similar in nature, but serve a different purpose. You know, so here we basically want to provide an API that you would connect to with your inbox client, and then you want to show the task for the logged in user. You know, so these, the, these APIs are always scope to the, the person um, that is basically calling the APIs via the, the, the client that you're using, whereas the other APIs are typically being used with the technical um, user. And then um, using these APIs, you can again get your tasks, get uh, additional uh, metadata about the task, get a task count, for example. And that's something I want to show you in a quick demo here. So I've already connected to um, an inbox service instance here. And with that, basically, I can now get uh, a task feed and that you could hook up to your UI of choice. And you can do things like, like a count, for example. And so there's 18 tasks on this user at the moment. Or you can search the tasks. And so if you're filtering in your UI, you don't want to do this client side, but push the query down to the back end. So you can search and then find uh, the tasks that match certain, a certain text. So this will be available. And um, oh, one, one thing I forgot to show um, is basically I uh, just want to show you how, how you will configure this. Yeah, so what's the experience of setting this up for now? As I said earlier, this will be a customer managed service for now. We will convert this into a SaaS based offering over time. But for the first release, um, you will basically go to your cloud platform cockpit, go into your account. 
your Cloud Foundry org and uh, your space. And then you find the service as a service on the service marketplace. Yeah, so here's um, the inbox service. some additional do documentation. Then later, if you do the configuration, this will include documentation and link documentation uh, from other cloud LOBs that you want to connect. Yeah, things like that. And then basically, you go ahead and create uh, an instance, just like you would for, for other services on cloud platform. So you can specify some details here. And then at the end of the day, you end up with an entry here. And the service keys give you all the technical details to um, basically connect to the running instance, to the service that was provisioned to you. And you can then go ahead and use this. And what's then left for you to do is do the actual configuration. And the way this works is that you um, configure destinations. So at the moment, we are reusing these existing capabilities. For each system that you want to connect, you basically maintain a destination. And the destination here gives, gives you the possibility to basically enter the URL, what's the endpoint um, that you're calling. You can specify the um, authentication, authorization details. And then there is some inbox specific parameters that are uh, that can be configured, which also impacts how um, the UI is visualized in, in, uh, in my tasks. And you do this for each endpoint. And then basically, um, the inbox service will pick up these destinations and call into the different backends um, periodically. OK, so. Um, Mobile, you know, certainly a frequently requested feature. You know, so if you use a central inbox, then you also want to access it from uh, your handset. And uh, we have a number of options that we're offering for this. And I'd also be interested to hear what you, know, you would expect, what your opinion is, what your requirements would be. Um, so the first thing that you can always do, obviously, is to, for example, run uh, the My Task app that I have just shown in uh, a mobile browser. You know, so all the apps that we built are responsive by, by default. So the same holds for, for the new inbox. Uh, works on all devices, no additional setup required. That's kind of the, the baseline. Um, the second thing that we're working on is an integration with mobile cards. You know, so this will be uh, an option for those users who are familiar with the wallet app from iOS. Not so much for, for Android users, yeah, but for, for iOS users, this is a known experience. And for casual users who don't have to work on you know, too many items uh, every day, so every once in a while something, um, that's a good experience. Yeah, so you have these, um, these cards that you can swipe through. It supports offline mode and, and uh, push notifications. And we will basically ship an out-of-the-box template that you can adapt to your needs, do some customizing and styling. Um, and this will be using mobile cards underneath. You know, so using these two services together, um, that's basically uh, the second option you have. And then the third one for you, of course, is to build your own native app. As you've seen earlier, we will provide public APIs that you can use. So if you want to fully customize the experience and have the best possible native look and feel, you can go ahead and, for example, use the Fury SDK for iOS or Android and build your own client. Um, we are contemplating about um, building a separate mobile um, inbox and native application that we then push to the Apple App Store and, and um, the Google App Store, for example. But the problem with these apps is, is that you can only customize them within certain limits, right? You need to go through the Apple uh, approval process. And then uh, if a customer wa wanted to change it to some extent, that would not be possible easily. You know, so that's uh, why we're still hesitating. We're discussing about it. And if you have opinions, I'll be uh, really happy to hear from you what your thoughts are on this. But that's basically um, the three options that, that we see right now. Mobile browser, integration with mobile cards, or build your own with the public APIs that we offer. 
Okay, and um, with that, I, you know, because many of you will already be using uh, one or the other solution, want to touch upon some of the recommendations that we're giving out right now, um, just so you're aware uh, how this relates to your existing investment. So if you are invested, for example, into my inbox on S4HANA, um, using the, the Gateway Hub, for example, uh, or also directly embedded in S4HANA, um, you can still continue to use my inbox, of course. You know, there is, uh, that's, that's clear. Um, one thing that you might want to look into, um, if you already use Cloud Platform Workflow, for example, we've published an article which shows basically how you can connect your um, S4, um, my inbox, or also the, the Gateway Hub via a web dispatcher to a Cloud Platform Workflow tenant and still preserve this my, my inbox experience, even though this all runs on-prem. So that's basically a stopgap solution that you can work with. But beyond that, um, if you use the setup with my inbox and, and gateway hub um, or S4 in an embedded approach, you should be aware that any customizations that you did um, are not easily translated one is to one to the new inbox service. You know, so if you build your own adapters um, in, in task gateway, uh, on the Gateway Hub by implementing these ABAP interfaces. As you saw, the concept will be different, right? In the cloud-based environment, this does not really add up. So uh, the REST APIs follow, you know, just a, we're following a basically uh, fundamentally different architecture here with a microservices-based approach. So um, that's something that, uh, that you should keep in mind. So my, our recommendation probably is minimize your investment into these custom extensions that you build and um, stay with what you have. It's still something that you can use for now. And then over time, you can transition into the new environment. If you have needs for, for workflows, or, yeah, so workflow automation, if you run on S4HANA, you can use flexible workflow. That's something that uh, we can definitely recommend. And if you build your own workflow solutions, extensions, for example, then um, Cloud Platform Workflow is our uh, recommendation at that point. Advantage, of course, also is that this will be integrated out of the box with the inbox service. Yeah? Okay, and with that, um, let's uh, come to a summary. So first thing I want you to remember is uh, that we're launching a new service, a new infrastructure service for federating tasks from multiple task providers. Uh, there will be a new app, My Tasks, which uh, is based on Fury 3, which you can use along with it, but there will also be public APIs that you can use both for integrating with um, third-party systems or for building your own uh, custom UI on top. There will be various options for having mobile access to the inbox service, and this will be available on Cloud Foundry, um, in the Cloud Foundry environment, not on Neo. And um, it's gonna follow a customer-managed uh, pass model, so you basically need to create, as I showed, these service instances on your own, do some technical configuration to set this all up, and it's going to follow a pay-per-use licensing model. You know, so depending on the volume of tasks that um, you bring into the system, uh, the pricing will uh, be done. We plan to release a first version of this later this year. Um, it's not fully decided if it's gonna be uh, a beta release or a GA release. Um, it also depends on um, the connectors that we're building for S4 and uh, success factors. Um, there are some, you know, still some things for us to resolve, but uh, these are the current plans. And then over time, over the course of next year, additional LOBs will join this. You know, so um, more and more LOBs like Ariba and Concur and Field Class are actively working on this already. So somewhere next year you will get an inbox where all the LOBs are basically integrated into. Okay, so um, that's roughly what I want to share with you.